Hello my friends who are listening to eBird Online, and I'm back with another review. And once again, the casting team at TLC, well, they haven't let us down. I thought that the magic was going to be like that, always living in Egypt. But I was in for a rude awakening. It was much different than I thought. Uh, Egypt? Different from America? You don't say. Yes, that's right, it's 90 Day Fiancé the other way. Season 4. And we're going to talk today about a brand new couple. Nicole, who's from LA, and Mahmood, who's from Egypt. And this review is going to be in two parts. Guys, it would seem to me we have another couple whose religious and sociological beliefs are at odds with each other. It would seem to me that both Nicole and Mahmood are upset and outraged. Uh, why? What about? Guys, apparently, water's wet. <laughs> and so after watching the interaction between this couple this week, I'm left wondering, is there anything that prevents either one of you from looking on the internet and doing some basic research? It does make me wonder. I know conspiracy theorists who have more structured qualitative research methods than these guys. They've somehow managed to meet, fall in love, get married, and live together for two months, all without understanding each other or each other's cultures. After a total of 11 months of wedded abyss, Nicole decided to come home. She said she had to get out of Egypt. She still hopes their relationship will work, and she's also hoping that now rivers will run uphill and water will turn into wine. Wanna hear more? I thought so. But right before we get into it, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed to my channel thus far. I genuinely appreciate it, but if you've yet to do so, please consider subscribing and joining the eBird family. And if you enjoy the video, please smash that like button to let the eBird know. It really does help my analytics. Thanks guys. So without further ado, I give you Nicole and Mahmood. So guys, let's meet Nicole. We first see her driving around LA and she's delivering pizzas. She lets us know it's a lot harder than people think, which I guess might well be true because people don't think it's hard at all. And she finds it quite difficult. And there we have it, our first clue of the decision-making capabilities of Nicole. She lets us know she quite often gets lost. And I wager that she gets lost in navigating relationships just as she gets lost delivering pizzas. And so Nicole lets us know that she's a fashionista. She said when she was younger, she knew she wanted more from life than Idaho could give her. So she decided to move to LA and enroll in fashion school. But when she finally graduated and got into the industry, she realized it wasn't for her. She tells us she didn't have the personality for it. So she's now delivering pizzas and also selling vintage clothes online. And guys, looking at Nicole, I think that fashion and how she looks and how she presents herself is a very big part of her being. And this is going to have a significant impact on how she navigates life when she finally gets to Egypt. And so Nicole takes us on a journey back in time. And she says she was holidaying in Egypt. And it was her final day. And she met Mahmood. And she says Mahmood was the man of her dreams. Okay. If you dream of somebody telling you what to do and what to wear, then yeah, I guess he was. So Nicole didn't actually meet Mahmood until her final day in Egypt in a fabric shop. He asked me if I like Egypt, and I said, I love Egypt, I want to stay in Egypt, it's amazing. And he said, you should, you should stay in Egypt and be my wife. And I was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. And so they ended up spending the whole of their final day together. And when she went back to LA, they kept in contact. And seven days later, she returned to Egypt and she married Mahmood. So I'm guessing she had just seven days to try and find out as much as she could about the Muslim culture. But unfortunately, she spent the seven days driving around Melrose Place, getting lost, delivering pizzas. She also tells us that she told nobody that she was getting married. I consider that to be a shame. Had she told even one person, they may well have led her to some sort of introspection. Do you have anything in common? Are your life goals in tune? But alas, she told nobody and got married anyway. And so Jen goes to meet a couple of her friends in a vintage clothing store. And she lets them know that she's on her way back to Egypt. For she's rekindled her relationship with husband Mahmood and she's going to live there for good. Guys, both of her friends were in shock and they said, I thought you were separating. And guys, be it possible, this story takes a turn for the worse. So Nicole tells production that the plan was that they'd get married in Egypt and then she'd come back to America to apply for a visa and then she'd travel back and forth between LA and Cairo to maintain the relationship. Well, I guess it sounds simple. <laughs> simple minds. It's the working of simple minds. So after the sixth time that Nicole was in Cairo, it all got too much for her. She came back to LA 
and the marriage, as they say, was over. So why did she call time on the marriage, I hear you ask? Well, Nicole had problems in the relationship because she was surprised by the following. One, the fact that she didn't understand Egyptian culture. Two, the fact that she didn't speak, read or write Egyptian. Three, she was unable to drive in Egypt and get around. Oh, really, Nicole? The way I hear it, you're fairly unable to drive in LA. <laughs> of course you can't drive in bloody Cairo. She said they argued about everything all the time, so after just 11 months of marriage, she came back to LA, asked him for a divorce, and then she blocked him. So then her friends wanted to know, well, what did he want you to change? What did you argue about? And then she said, I couldn't wear what I wanted. He wanted me to cover my hair, and I wasn't allowed to hug any men. She also was not allowed to drink alcohol, and she said to production, every time I turned around, there was a new rule. He was just, he only wanted to be married to somebody who lives up to his standards of, like, who a wife should be. And so he set forth in changing everything about me. And that, I said, yes, a bunch of things I shouldn't have. Well, what were some of the things that you agreed to? He wants me to cover my body. And without thinking, I said, okay, okay. And then he wanted me to cover my hair, and I said, okay. No uh, hugs from men. It really is quite the list. But she did say that Mahmood loves her like she's never been loved before. And so she's determined to go back to Egypt and make a go of things. This time, she says, there won't be so much of a culture shock. And so the next time we see Nicole, she decides to FaceTime Mahmood. They greet each other, and then she said, we have a lot of things to talk about before I move back over to Egypt. And he said, it doesn't matter. Everything will be fine. And guys, this tells me one thing. If he's not concerned, that's because he's not planning on doing any of the changing whatsoever. He just thinks she's coming back to now, finally, obey his rules. He considers they have little to discuss. And if that wasn't bad enough, Mahmood also says that he believes all of the fights are the fault of Nicole. Yeah, I know you love to fight. <laughs> You're Mr. Jokester today. No, my love, this is the truth. This is the one that tells fights. You don't start any fights? Sometimes, but not much as you do. <laughs> Again, he seems to think that everything is down to Nicole to deal with and to sort out. But there's one main bone of contention for fashion Eastern Nicole. And this one issue creates the majority of the fights they have. But the biggest thing and the strangest thing that we fight about constantly is my clothes. We fight endlessly for hours about what I can and cannot wear. And so to this he says, no, we don't need to discuss your clothes. And she said, well, you told me all I had to do was cover up. But then you came with a new rule. Oh, well, that doesn't sound good. What was the new rule, Nicole? Guys, the new rule was she can't wear tight, form-fitting clothes. Okay, my love, like, you know, I always ask you to cover your body. Because you can cover your body, but you're making, like, seats so tight, you can't show, like, your body so, no? So now you're saying, like, tight is an issue. Of course, I always say that. No, I thought it was just that you, the, there needed to be, like, fabric covering, like, my skin. I don't want, like, okay, like, you, like, wearing clothes, it's like, oh, it's like some, like, on your body, no. Well, Nicole, I've got to say, that's fairly unsurprising. If all you had to do was cover up, you could, in essence, wear a cat suit. You could wear a leotard and tights. You could wear leggings so tight, we could all see what you had for dinner. And like I say earlier, had she done some primary research, she would know very well that this was not going to fly in Egypt. Also, she met him in Egypt, so she'd looked around. Did you see anyone else wearing form-fitting, skin-tight clothes? Not really. Certainly not outside of a beach setting. One of these days, Nicole, you're going to have to use your noddle. But the big problem with all of this was the fact that Mahmood said, oh, I don't want to talk about those sorts of things now. And Nicole said, but I need to talk about it because I need us to be on the same page when I come back over to Egypt. And Nicole said something very ominous to production. She said, the day we were going to get married, Mahmood said to me, you can only ever wear long clothes and I want you totally covered up after we're married. And Nicole said she was instantly worried because she'd never had anyone tell her what to wear. This should have been clue number one, that this marriage needed, well, a little bit more thought, a soup son, more thought. And she told Mahmood, I thought there'd be some wiggle room. Oh, come on, Nicole. We all know there's not that much wiggle room in leggings. But Mahmood shot back immediately and said, so you didn't take me seriously? And she said, well, no, and I really regret it. He said, well, I do my best, but nothing's going to change regarding how you dress and my thoughts on your clothes. 
And so she said, well, we're going to have to keep thinking about this and see what we can come up with. And then she tells production, this is so challenging, but I love him so much and I want to find a way to work it out. And as she talks to production, she breaks down in tears and you can see that she's really genuinely agonising over the situation. And that's where we end things for this week. And so what does the eBird make to all of this? Well, unfortunately, the problems that exist within this marriage are not set to change by the looks of things. Mamu just thinks, well, you're always the one causing the fights. I told you what I want you to wear and you're the one who didn't take me seriously and now you are refusing to do it. And whilst I think the blame lies with both of them, he should have known that an American was unlikely to want to wear Islamic dress and to cover her head. And he also would have noticed what she was wearing when he met her when she was on holiday. However, unfortunately on this occasion, I'm going to have to put a little bit more of the blame onto Nicole. For two reasons. One, you're the one moving to Egypt. And you know that Ebert is a big believer in the old maxim when in Rome. You can't unilaterally decide to take Western ways and Western dress codes to a Muslim country. It's neither feasible nor reasonable. Secondly, you also knew that clothes were a massive part of your identity, your being, who you are. You did a fashion design course. You work part of the time in fashion. So it was always going to be even more of a problem to you than it would be for the average person. And I've kind of got a theory that Nicole's quite a quiet person and I think that she expresses herself via her clothes through fashion. And if this is very important to Nicole, one would have thought she might give it a little more consideration. She was absolutely tipped off before the wedding, although unfortunately not before she arrived back in Egypt to get married. But before the wedding, he did say to her, this is what I want you to wear. And when she saw that big red flag waving in the wind, she should have called the wedding off at that point. But instead, she dived in head first, hoping that she would be able to change his mind and, well, here we are. I haven't got a proper read on Mahmood yet because we've only seen him for, well, a few seconds. But the phrase laissez-faire springs to mind. Thus far, I don't like his attitude, his laughter and his lack of care and concern for Nicole. It's Nicole who's uprooting her life yet again to move to Egypt with a one-way ticket. And it's Nicole that's got to do all the compromising and all of the changing. He's laying back on his bed, chilled out, laughing and joking about the situation. And poor Nicole's there, crying and worrying about the same situation. So guys, let me know what you think in comments down below. Do you think there's any way this relationship can work? I don't see how. And I've got a massive feeling that even if he comes back to America with her, if she decides to restart the cancelled visa process, I still think he's exceedingly unlikely to change. I still think he's going to want her to wear certain clothes. I still think he's going to want to be the one who makes the decisions within this relationship. So yes, I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in comments down below and I'll get on with my next video. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smash the like button. It really helps with my analytics. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, give it a go. Thanks so much for listening. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day.